after the defeat of Guandu, only Yuan Shao's nephew Gao Gan's command in Bing province, numbering about 50,000, were the most organised and highest in morale. He had gained the support of Guo Yuan and the southern Xiongnu leader, Hu Xu Chuan. After they were defeated by Cao Cao's ally Ma Teng, the Yuan brothers started fighting amongst themselves, so he decided to surrender over to Tao, for now. While the second son, Yuan Shi, was content with controlling Yu province and staying out of his brother's conflict, Yuan Shang's and Yuan Tan's feud took a turn for the worse as soon as they defeated Tao Tao at the Battle of Li Yang. After a failed attack against his brother, Yuan Tan fled to Nanpi on the border with Xing province, a place where he still held his inspector title over. While he could rely on some assistance from his base, many of his men rebelled, so his position was very insecure. Yuan Shang marched his army to lay siege to Nanpi, so Yuan Tan had to flee south to Pingyuan, where he was now on the border of Tao Tao. Guo Tu devised a plan to seek an alliance with Tao Tao, whom he believed would attack Yi. When Yuan Shang returns to his defence, Tan could take the lands to the north of the city. If everything went to plan, then Yuan Shang would be removed from power, and Tao Tao would become overstretched once more, and would have no choice but to return south. Yuan Tan didn't agree at first, but later admitted that gaining control of the north could make him capable enough to make a stand. He sent Xin Pi as an ambassador to forge the alliance with Tao, who was unsure of what to make of the envoy. Xin Ye had long advocated to settle the north before turning attentions elsewhere, so he thought it was time to reap the benefits of the Yuan family feud before they reunite. Even though Tao Tao agreed to return north, he maintained his focus on Jing province. Seeing that he was doubtful of Yuan Tan's sincerity, Xin Pi spoke plainly to Tao Tao. Your Excellency has no reason to be concerned about Yuan Tan's loyalty, you have only to consider his military strength. One of the brothers is suddenly asking for your help, and you can see from this just how weak they are. Yuan Shang has Yuan Tan in trouble, but you cannot defeat him, and this is because his strength is exhausted. If you move against Yi, Yuan Shang must go back to guard his base for his own preservation, and as he does so, Yuan Tan will follow at his heels. Attacking an enemy distressed and desperate, striking a rebel discouraged and weary, with your power, it will be like a strong wind moving the autumn leaves. Heaven has put Yuan Shang into your hands. If, on the other hand, you fail to settle them now and decide to wait another year, the next harvest there may be grain, and your enemies will have recognised their errors. They will reform their government and revive their power, so you will have lost a chance to use your soldiers. By far the best policy for you now is to follow Yuan Tan's request and send him help. Of all of your enemies, none are greater than those to the north of the Yellow River. Once you have brought them under control, then the Imperial Army will have gained its full strength, and all the Empire will tremble before you. Thus, Cao Cao accepted Xin Pi's advice as he switched sides, then the army marched back across the river to Li Yang. He cemented the alliance by arranging a marriage between his son Cao Zheng and Yuan Tan's daughter. Yuan Shang indeed lifted his siege on Ping Yuan, then returned to guard Yi, while Cao Cao returned south for the time being, mindful of the logistical problems that hindered him before. Several waterwork projects were started to ease the transportation of supplies, during which Yuan Shang thought it was safe to resume his siege at Ping Yuan. The loyal supporter Shen Pi was left behind with an unknown number of troops to defend the city, even though both of his sons had been captured during the Battle of Guandu. Some within the camp thought Yuan Shang's actions were questionable, so they planned to rebel once he had left. Shen Pi discovered the treacherous plot by suppressing Su Yu, who then fled to Cao Tao. At the gates of Yi, Cao Tao had mounds and tunnels constructed to help the encirclement. Shen Pi vigorously defended the city by digging trenches to counter the enemy tunnels, so only a few weeks after the digging was complete, Cao Tao changed tactics and had them destroyed. In their place, a moat was dug all the way around the city. It was shallow enough to be crossed at first, so Shen Pi laughed when he saw it and paid it no heed. At one point, Feng Li opened a sally port to let the enemy in. Shen Pi found out about it, so he had boulders dropped into the opening, blocking the gate, then they killed roughly 300 soldiers who had passed through. Cao Hong maintained the front line, as Cao Cao turned west to attack Yin Kai, the county magistrate who guarded the supply route from Bing province. His fortress at the foot of the Taihang Mountains was stormed by Cao Cao, who then led his army north, bypassing Yi's defences on the way. This development encouraged even more defections from Yuan Shang's county magistrates, then the local bandit leader Zhang Yan also arrived to offer his assistance. By now, Yi was cut off from the south, west and north, while Yuan Shang was positioned to the east, facing Yuan Tan. Cao Tao returned to the siege lines in the fifth month, then in a single night he dug the moat a further 20 feet wide and 20 foot deep, encompassing the rivers to the north, east and west, plus a marsh in the south, drawing water in from all directions. 
The city became isolated, and it was said that by the beginning of autumn, more than half the people within it had died of starvation. In the summertime, Yuan Shang aborted his campaign and returned to defend his headquarters. His registrar Li Fu was sent ahead to notify the defenders that help was on its way. He brought with him only three horsemen, broke his staff of authority and travelled by night. He dressed as a disciplinary officer and went through Cao Cao's camps in the north, finding faults with the sentries and punishing them. In this fashion, he made his way to the eastern camps, then to the southern camps where Cao Cao's personal tent was. A group of picket duty soldiers on the front line, positioned to provide a timely warning for Cao Cao, were all arrested then tied up. Li Fu then made a dash for the city walls, shouting up to the defenders who ecstatically sounded the drums. They threw him a rope, then they all celebrated upon his arrival, and Cao Cao laughed when he heard of Li Fu's stunt. Knowing that he couldn't use the same trick to leave as he did to enter, Li Fu came up with another trick. He had Shen Pi arrange to have the old and weak sent out of the city to save on food. Several thousand people carrying white flags left during the night, but they exited out of three different gates. Li Fu blended his followers into the crowd, then escaped to the surrounding camps to the northwest. Yuan Shang was glad to see Li Fu return, while Tao Tao clapped his hands and laughed again when he found out he successfully escaped. Li Fu's exploits had made Tao's men well aware that Yuan Shang was on his way back, but they were concerned that Yuan Tan would be hot on his heels. According to Sun Tzu's Art of War, Yuan Shang's soldiers would be fighting on death ground, but they would fight more fiercely to save themselves, as they had no other option. To settle his troops, Tao Tao pointed out that if the enemy comes from the main road, they will indeed avoid battle with them. However, if they arrive from the northwestern hills, they'll be in a vulnerable position, with Gao Gan's Bing province behind them. When scouts reported that Yuan Shang's army had reached Han Dan, Tao Tao was delighted. He candidly announced to his generals, I already have Xi province, did you know? You shall see soon. From the western hills, Yuan Shang turned east to Yangping village, some 17 miles north from Yi. The relief army set up camp on the bank of the Fu River and lit torches to signal the defenders for a coordinated attack, who sent a signal back. When Shen Pi left the city gates to rendezvous with Yuan Shang, both armies were defeated and forced to pull back. Yuan Shang stopped at a bend on the Zhang River as Tao Tao moved to surround him. He sent Yin Kai and Chen Lin to negotiate for surrender, but Tao Tao refused and pressed the encirclement faster. Yuan Shang escaped with his army at night to the western Xi Hills, where he was defeated once more, then the men completely scattered. Ma Yan and Zhang Yi surrendered, while Yuan Shang fled far north to Zhongshan Commandery. Cao Tao returned to Yi with the trophies, seal and insignia from Yuan Shang, and showed it to the defenders which greatly demoralised them. Shen Pi was adamant that Yuan Shi would come to the rescue, so he did his best to rally his men. When Cao Tao rode out to inspect the siege works, Shen Pi ordered his crossbowman to fire at him, narrowly missing. A few nights later though, Shen Pi's own nephew Shen Rong opened the city gates to let in the enemy. As the city became occupied, Xin Ping and his family were put to death, because Yuan Shang considered Xin Pi a traitor who was responsible for their downfall. He led his remaining soldiers to join the defence line at the gates, fighting to the death as they were pushed back to the city streets. Xin Pi, who was with Tao Tao at the time, rushed to the prison to free his family, but it was too late as they were already dead. Shen Pi was finally captured alive after clinging onto the city for more than half a year. He remained defiant till the very end, lamenting the crossbow bolts that didn't hit Tao Tao and cursing the traitors who surrendered. Tao was very impressed by his fierce loyalty and wanted to recruit him, but Shin Pi begged for death. On the execution grounds, Shen Pi demanded to be allowed to face North as he died, since his lord Yuan Shang was in that direction. Many soldiers of the Bing province troops were sent to settle in Yi in order to prevent a rebellion in favour of the Yuans. The inspector of Bing, Gao Gan, kept up his nominal surrender to Cao Tao for the time being. Yuan Tan had been taking advantage of the siege by capturing territories that belonged to his brother, then he defeated him when he arrived at Zhongshan. Since Yuan Tan was at least expected to participate in the siege, Tao accused him of acting in bad faith, so cancelled the marriage and moved to attack him at Nanpi. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.